Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. So today, today I'm actually going to do a Python cheat sheet, a sudden brush up of the Python fundamentals because actually my interviews are near. So I just like to share this with you so we can learn together. So if there is any mistakes while going through, you can comment it in the comment box. So let's go through this. And so actually we, we are going from basic to advanced concepts in Python. It's a sudden brush up. So when we come through such questions, we can face it so first one is like what is python so python as we all know it is a high level programming language which is a high level input you know, it is also having high level input data structures we can directly do inbuilt uh, in some inbuilt functions are there we can directly implement such data structure concepts and all and also dynamic binding dynamic binding is one of the advantage of python which is actually called as late binding or they can also call it as runtime binding so runtime binding actually in the sense we python as we know it is an interpreter language so it will only read line by line so when we need a particular functions to be called during like for example we have a class uh, and we are actually creating an object to call the methods from this class so we can say like i will give you an example look here is a class named animal and we have a, a make sound as a function inside that and we have two other classes that is dog and cat which is inheriting the features of animal both are both of them are having the same function named make, make sound which is actually overriding the param class so we can see uh, we have created an object named animal for this animal class dog for this dog class cat for this cat class so when this particular objects are created uh, dynamic binding is actually coming into action where we can see that we are actually using this animal name to call this function so actually this particular function is invoked at that time so animal make sound will come and when we are using the object of the other class that is dog which is also which is inheriting the make sound that is of the parent class animal but it gives dog barks as a result because we are actually overriding it so this is where dynamic binding comes into action uh, in python as we know it won't compile and run it will actually like do uh, it is a, an interpreter language so it reads line by line so this dynamic binding actually helps in that it is also called as runtime binding so the advantage of python from other programming language is that it is easy to write and we can understand the syntax very easily it is similar to an Indi english language which makes it more easier for beginners as well as for experienced folks this is my widely used in machine learning data analytics and all the extensive applicability of support and library support is very much scalable so that's how it comes in top of that uh, okay now we can see python's arithmetic operators Arith arithmetic operators as we all know that are plus minus addition subtraction uh, multiplication division floor division this is what we use like floor division we can see like while we are doing binary search and all we can directly give this floor division so that there won't be any floor values uh, so this is an advantage of this then we can use the reminder that is modulus so like floor division means one by by three like we could see many output questions for that one by by three like one floor three which will be zero 2 floor 3 0 3 floor 3 it will be 1 4 floor 3 it will be like 1 then it is actually 1.3 for 4 floor 3 but as i told it will be uh, dragged back to the floor value when it comes to modulus it is actually the reminder so that's it so we can see that these are the common concepts now we are going for the python data types in python there is no need to define a data type like we does in c plus plus or java we have there is no need to declare it like int a int b string a something like that we can directly give a equal to zero that means python will understand that oh that particular variable is an integer if we give a is equal to hello in double quotes it understands that oh it is actually a string variable like we can do when it comes to boolean it is like true or false floating point it is like similarly so that's some data types so integer string boolean and floating point number seven they ask what are the different data types that can be used in python we can say this so next we are coming to python variables so while creating while writing a variable that's one of the important thing there is one thing to uh, take care like i'm just declaring a variable name as this is a variable name that's correct underscore a is also a variable name that's also correct a underscore is also a variable name and so probably we can give it like that but we can't use numbers in between we can't use numbers like uh, let's see it cannot begin with the okay actually it cannot begin with a number that's the main thing it must consist of letters as well as this this underscore symbols only let's see if we can try it using uh, a number we can is equal to 
ELG. So it's an actual uh, error. We cannot start with a number, but we can start with an underscore. Uh, that's correct. Uh, so that's true. And when let's try bringing the number in, in between this. Okay, so that also works. So we cannot start it with a number, but we can use it in between and all. So we uh, variables in Python which start with an underscore. So we actually can start with an underscore, but they are called as unuseful. So when they ask what are unuseful variables, so we can say that like when we start a particular variable name with an underscore symbol, it is called as unuseful. So this is how it works. Look at this. Way. Here we can see a proper variable name. Here also another proper variable name. Now we comes to when now when it comes to Python comments, that's another thing. So it is like a line of text which are ignored by the compiler. So during the execution, this the compiler will actually ignore this particular line. So Python comments can be of inline comment as well as multi-line comment. So for inline comment, we can use the symbol hash. So hash is called as inline comment. So this won't be read by the Python. We can also use multi-line comment like this. We can use multi-line comment like this, but there is also one more multi-line comment that's called as doc string, doc string. I guess it's doc string multi-line, um, doc string command. Yeah. So the other one is called as doc string command. We can give the command inside this. This is similar to you can write paragraphs in between. So these are the two types of comments. The first one we use hash. Second one we use triple quotes. Now we are going for the standard Python functions. So print is the uh, basic function that we use to print a particular thing inside that. If you want to print a string, we have to give double quotes or single quotes into that. So it is it prints some specific message to the screen or some standard output device. So we can use string numbers or any other objects using this function. So this is one of the important function that is used in Python. We can also print multiple tokens in that by specifying comma and or we can uh, do it differently. Like here we can see print my name is we are given war, comma that is what this is string and the war can be something else. So by this way we can do that. This is actually concatenating both of them. My name is this. Uh, similarly we are doing this. So also for this actually list you will come across what it is list. So print a means it will directly print the list. Input is for taking the it is similar to C I in, in C++ or C. Uh, so input is actually for taking in the input from the user so that's when I, if you give input like this we can directly enter the data and we'll get the result length function we know length which means length for getting the length of that particular thing here a is equal to one two three that means one two three there are three data into the inside this when we put length of a we'll get three as a result similarly for string and all we can do the same thing or the or is actually a function where we can get the unicode of where we can get the unique code. It represents the unique code character that is passed into it. It takes a single character. So actually ASCII table we know when we are passing a particular character value uh, or symbol, we can get the unique code. Uh, unique code of that A means the ASCII value of A65. 5 means ASCII value is 53 from the table we know. So similarly, we are using or for getting that particular thing. So this will be useful in many problems solving things. No Python type casting. So type casting is basically actually we are converting a particular variable of a particular data type into some other data type. That's actually called a Python type casting. So type casting can be of two types: implicit as well as explicit. Implicit type casting is like we are using the Python compiler internally type cast one way internally inside it only inside the compiler only it will convert one variable into another type without any external action of the user. External action in the sense I will tell what does that mean when we come to explicit, explicit casting. Here we can see int number. So 100 is an integer 1.01 is a float. So we are actually adding both of them. So answer will be definitely float. We are uh, adding 100 and 100 plus 1.01. 100 plus 1 .01. And we are using type. Type means that's a function where we are implicitly ca casting the float type of the uh, of actually for a greater precision. So we can do like that. When it comes to explicit casting, we are casting it. The user forcibly casts it to change it from one variable to another. We use it in most of the cases like uh, I am given a as an integer as 100. I wanted to convert it into string. I can use str of a. That means I'm converting this particular a into string. Actually, now a is in string. Similarly, we can convert like a string to integer if it is like uh, numbers only. Uh, uh, number to float likewise we can do the explicit 
casting. So this is a, uh, this is what actually called as explicit type casting. Looking integers to string, we can do integer to float. We can do so. That's some of the methods we can use float. These are the function names. Scar str uh, str str for converting into string. Float for converting into float. From float, we can convert it into integer. So while we are for converting into integer, it will be actually uh, casting into an integer and also it will be like the floor value 7.8 means it will give the 7 that's what it means now what is flow control flow control from here itself we can understand the flow control means we are controlling the flow of how the program should run so some of the flow control we can use uh, we can explain it. first one the relational operators relational operators we know we are comparing it uh, equal to equal to means we are uh, it is just mean equal to for example 100 equal to equal to 100 this means 100 equal to 100 only yeah, but in Python we use double equal to that's the thing greater than or equal to less than or equal to greater than less than or equal to so these are some of the relational operators we came across arithmetic now it's relational so but there is one thing we have to focus upon is when we are using boolean comparisons for example if a equal to equal if true equal to equal to false print I am just doing is print I'm just doing like this so it actually works because we will get the answer but it is not actually the right way of doing it when we are using boolean we have to use is or is not when comparing it so that's what we have to think it is actually the proper way of doing so just focus it next one comes to boolean operators boolean operators we know for comparing them we use and or not if true and true that means both has to be true true or false anyone has to be true then to anyone has to be true or false zero to one then not it is not equal to the other one so these are the boolean operators and or as well as not now some of the example look true and true means uh, true and false means it is definitely false because one is one and other one is zero one into zero will be zero and comes to or one zero one plus or we will mostly consider as zero plus no so i'm just doing a bit it's addition so one plus zero will be one not false means it should be true so that's how it works so this will be very much useful when we are working with some problems and all uh, when we are working with conditions and all next one the ninth one is conditional statement conditional we are particularly giving conditions to statements for example if this is this then that is that likewise so the very most used conditional statement is if statement we use switch cases in uh, c++ and all which we don't use it here so if statement is a conditional statement that will perform some operation so if the expression gives in it evaluates to be true as shown below for example if I guess you all know this if var is good then we will print this or we will print that else we can use so if statement look i have given here itself if this is this okay that's true so else means when that particular condition does not meet the condition we can give elif that's other thing elif means there are some more conditions that has to be handled true is uh, is uh, we will give some other thing if a equal to equal to hello then we have to print a high elif a equal to equal to high then i have to print something else look print uh, this thing else if both of them didn't meet i will do the other one so elif is actually a conjunction to the if statement we can say that it is actually a conjunction with the if statement and if some other conditions are actually needed to be evaluated then else that i told it is when none of that statements met and none of the conditions are met will come to this stage so that's the if else case we'll uh, if else ladder we know when we are giving many conditions to that next is loop statements loops are one of the important things in python not only in python in more almost every programming languages when we have to run through a particular list or string or particular values we use loops so for loop for and while we use here i don't uh, think we use do while in python so for loop is used to try variables like string where uh, this and all so in python we use like for then I'm giving i as the variable in range. In range means from word to word. So I'm just giving 0 to 5. I want to print this range. So I am actually looping from 0 to 5. 5. So it will print from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It, will, it won't touch 5. So from 0 to 5. Uh, there, it is not necessary to give 0. We can directly give like this. It will run from 0 to 5. So actually the first one is actually called as the starting point. This one is called as the ending point. We can also give one more thing that is called as the steps i'm just just giving two as steps that means zero the next one is called one two like what will come zero two then four it will step that much thing we can also come from backwards like till five it has to come 
from where from one i have to come in a reversed manner that is minus one so from the last value i'm coming to the first value so this is how the looping works we can work with, there are different statements where we can work through that uh, there is also one more advantage in python where i am suppose i have a string like hello i can loop through this string directly when i give like i in a when i print i i can give uh, print like h e l l o separately so this is one of the advantage of python we can take everything individually through that rather than going in a range so that's how four statement comes this is what i told four with a particular uh, range zero to four something like that first one is start then stop then step so these are the three arguments we can see inside that range function so next to four with in this is what i told a is equal to one two three four means for element in a for i in a that means it will loop through everything it won't take index this one uh, problem here we won't be considering the index we will directly will be considering the values now while loop it is similar to uh, the while loop that we have gone through in other languages so we are particularly giving a condition but the thing is like we have to give the break conditions look here count is greater than zero count is five so from five it will five actually greater than zero it will print five then five will be uh, decremented to four if you won't give this condition it will go to an infinite state so that's one other disadvantage of it's not a disadvantage that's how it works we have to give the condition individually now jump statements is actually a statement where we want to break a particular condition for example i have uh, i am running through this look, we will see it here itself i in a i am running through this when i becomes e i don't want to print it i want to break it i want to stop it from there so i will only get the result as uh, i will only get the result at h because i am just breaking it when it meets i first it will be a h now it met e so it is not printing that it breaks from there and the other one condition is like uh, we call this as just statements so other one statement is continue so when e is met we won't break it but it will go to the starting point of the loop so uh, this will print like h when it meets e it won't print anything it will go to the top then l it will print l o so h l l o it will go like that so that's how continue statement work here that statement allows us to send the control back to the starting of the loop skipping all the lines of the code below in the loop so this is actually uh, this is a flow chart i actually downloaded this from interview bit if you want you can go through that uh, you will get this cheat sheet uh, so i in range of way so when i becomes three continue as i told pass so pass is actually a null statement uh, for uh, mostly we we'll use pass in cases like i'm just i want i'm writing a code i'm doing a project i uh, declare functions like addition then subtraction and i am actually going to write the statements for this after some time so i can give pass which means it won't create any error it, it is just a null statement it won't be passed or we can do like for i in a if i equal to equal to e just like how we uh, saw previously uh, if i becomes e i want to pass it that means i am not printing anything i'm just putting it null h h e l l o if it is like i'm just it's like i'm going it is of no use that's the main thing it is actually null statement it is generally used as a placeholder uh, look here we can see when i plus is to becomes to 